somebody gave her at church, and when nobody was home, Dad said I would put that record in. And the 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 song always it said it said the sheltering fold held securely the ninety and nine safe within, but one poor lost sheep found no shelter. Far out on the desert of sin, the blackness of night fell around him, and filled his poor heart with alarm. But the good shepherd saw it till he found him and gathered him safe in his arms. And the chorus said, through the storm, through the night, he went seeking, and he sought it with such a fearful call. I'm so glad that he saw it till he found it, for I am the sheep that is lost. And my dad would say, he, later when he would sing that song, he would always say, when I heard that song on that record player, he said, I knew that was me. I knew I was the sheep that was lost. But he said, I didn't know how near the edge I was. I didn't know how near the precipice. I didn't know what lurked for me in the darkness. I didn't know there was a, an enemy like a lion going to and fro seeking whom he may devour. I didn't know any of that. But he said the good shepherd saw it with a fearful call because he knew. Well, I'm there at that gravesite, and that song floods into my mind. I can see my dad standing in the kitchen with his shoulders back singing, Through the storm, through the night, he went seeking could see him and by the time I finished fixing his grave I knew what I'd do I would paint the lost sheep I don't know what Jesus looks like and I didn't paint him I just painted a shepherd and in a way the lost sheep is a portrait of us all because that's where we all were and he said you didn't choose me we didn't go looking for him he said I chose you and he sought for us David said goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life Tracked us down. That's what Dad used to say, track me down. He was trying to he's trying to learn how to be bad, trying to drink beer. Like the guys down at the sawmill. And mom asked the ladies at church to pray. And they prayed for Dad. And the Holy Spirit began to convict his heart. So anyway, I did the painting. I, I, I had I never do this. I had false starts. I did one painting, discarded it, did another one, discarded it halfway through. I never do that. I'm always <coughs> in the bullseye. It's been a long time since I've thrown a painting away, but I did. So, uh, so this is the, the last attempt. And so, so this, this actually, is, this is a watercolor painting. I don't know how you can see it from where you are, but it's a watercolor. It's actually on paper, uh, but not framed under glass. Um, I've only done that three times in my career where I, um, where I, after the painting is finished, I spray it. And you could wash it with a washcloth, but it's just paper. Um, let me tell you a couple of things about this image itself. I know this guy. Everything I paint is real. So I know this guy. He's from, he's from Israel. I'm not going to tell you his name because he is a converted Muslim, and they'll hunt him down. Mm-hmm. I want this guy to the Lord. And uh, so he's glad to be in the painting, but he said, <laughs> don't broadcast it. <laughs> it won't be good for me. And uh, so on, after I've been to Dad's <coughs> grave, I thought I would ask him if he would if he would be in it, and he said he would. And I said, "Well, can you get some authentic clothes from Israel?" He said, "Sure, I got kids over there." So he had them send him this headpiece and this robe and all this stuff. And then I had to find sheep. Sheep look like everything in the world, you know. Some of them look like goats, and some have black faces. And I and I got to wondering what kind of sheep would have been common in our Lord's day. So I did some research, and this is the kind. And there was a farmer in Harrodsburg. Kentucky that grew this kind of sheep, so I set up a time to take my friend and go there, and uh, and so we we headed there, and when we it was pouring down the rain, I mean pouring, and I thought this is insane. I set up the time we meet at church, and we're going to Harrisburg about a 35 minute drive, and it is pouring, and it doesn't let up. And the guy told me the farmer said, "You'll know my house because when you get there, there'll be 200 sheep in the front pasture." There were not two. <laughs> Don't you love people who give you those kind of directions? Just go past the spotted cow and turn left. <laughs> there were no 200 sheep. So by the time I found his house, it had quit raining. And, but the sky was still black, like it could start any moment. I went on the front porch and knocked on the door. And he was, a, in every way, a predictable Kentucky farmer with these bibs. And he stepped out and said, you must be the artist. Yes, sir. You had to be, because nobody else is out looking for sheep in the middle of this kind of way. <laughs> he said, I, I, I got them all up at the barn. I'll come up and I'll show you what I got. And so we went to the barn, and he opened it up, and there were 200 sheep, sure enough. <laughs> there they were, all in there, all the noise and the smell and everything. He said, which one would you want? 
<laughs> and I wanted one that was big enough to get in trouble and small enough not to know better. You know, I wanted an adolescent. So I pointed one out I thought was just right. He went in and gathered it up and brought it and gave it to my friend. As sure as I'm speaking to you, he stepped out the door, and it was just like God reached from heaven and just opened a slit in the clouds to create this light that you see. Is that incredible light? I did not make that up or do that creatively. Suddenly, God just shellacked everything brilliantly with rain, and all the colors were intensified, and then he just opened up this place where the light just peeked through. I'm going to end it here, and then I want to pray with you all today before before we go, at least before I finish my part. But um, the second verse to the song that I didn't quote to you said, Now the sheep that was lost was so happy as he lay on the good shepherd's breast, for his arms were so strong yet so tender that his heart felt a sweet, tranquil rest. Well, I, I got all these words in me because I've heard Dad sing this song 200 times. And this sheep is squirming to get down the whole time. All he wants to do is to get down and get away from my friend. So all, in every picture, I've got this sheep in every imaginable contortion. <laughs> <laughs> and then, all of a sudden, he just quit and turned and he laid his head right there. Wow. And he just stayed there. He never moved. He just laid his head right on the good shepherd's breast. And I knew, I knew then that I had something for a painting. I never, it was not in my thinking that I would do that and I would race down here to American Family Association and to Tim and tell you all about it or anything like that and unveil it on the radio like we've done. But uh, about the time I finished it, Tim called me to be on Charathon. And uh, we do that just about every time you have one. And I get on there and tell people to give Give money to American Family Association because I love you all and love what you do. And so we do that, and there's about two minutes left, and Tim said, what are you working on? I said, I'm working on a painting called The Lost Sheep. Describe it to me. I did, and immediately 1,800 people went to the website instantly. And so I told Tim later, maybe we should tell your audience about it because they may want to see it. So anyway, you can tell it's very personal to me. Uh, this is the original. This is not a print. So uh, I hope that you'll, before you head back to your work, that you'll take a chance to see it up close because it is for sale for about, this, about the price of a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it will sell, and the money is not nearly as nice to look at. Uh, so um, don't you love the Lord? Yeah. I... Um, I think of my own plight and how lost I was and how rebellious and how unconcerned that I was about even my own condition and how full and comprehensive his love is. And um, lately, as I've been teaching, uh, I've been asking and answering the question, what is the church? We know the church is not a building. It's not a denomination. It's not an organization. It's, it's the ecclesia, the called out ones. And uh, it's you and me. And Jesus said he would build his church. He said, I'll build my church. That's what he told Peter when Peter, Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, Upon this rock, I'll build my church. The church is not too spectacular in America today. And the reason is because we've stuck our hands all over it and built it ourselves. We've built, it, <coughs> built a pretty big mess, really. But he said, actually, in Ephesians chapter 5, there, he said, Husbands are to love their wife as Christ loved the church. He gave himself for her that he might present her to himself in splendor. When God builds anything, it's always glorious. It's always radiant. It's always incredible. He meant for the church to be that way. So I'm not going to teach this. I'm only going to make one point. Whenever Christ began to reveal to us in the New Testament, the identifying characteristics of the church. The first thing he said, he said, my house will be called a house of prayer. Mm -hmm. Now, if you went to a place called the house of tacos, what would you expect to find? Tacos. Big tacos, small tacos.